How are you all doing today? Today we are continuing the series on Linux, Linux gaming specifically, because as I said, this was requested quite a bit in previous videos. And as you can probably tell, we're actually running an audacity. We're not running Adobe Audition in the background today. And that is because currently we are in Linux, specifically a Linux distro called Pop OS, which seems to be the pretty much most popular distro for gaming that I have found. And to make this a little bit more interesting, we're not running this off of my hard drive. We're actually running it off of a USB stick. Yes, I have actually installed Pop OS onto a USB stick, and that is what we are running it from live. So I have everything installed on it. Everything is perfectly ready. I've installed Wine, I've installed Lutris, I've installed Steam and changed it to Proton, which is actually a huge thing now in Linux gaming that I have found out. Proton is now a thing in Steam on Linux where you can actually install pretty much all of your Steam games. Now, how are they going to run? I'm not entirely sure yet. That is what we are here to find out. I've installed a few of the more graphically demanding games that I have. For example, The Forest, and Subnautica. So those are the two we will be trying out today. I wanted to do PUBG, but it's 30 gigabytes and that would take way too long to install. Now, what I have also been made aware of in the comments section is the fact that VR does actually run on Linux. Yes, it does, not Oculus hardware, but the HTC Vive and the Valve Index, anything that requires Steam VR can actually run on Linux. Again, how well it runs, I'm not sure. I don't have the Valve Index or the HTC Vive to try that out, but the people in the comments section have been super helpful with that. So if you guys have any questions, I bet you can ask them. We are going to open up Steam. And as you can see here, if I switch into my library, we have the forest and we can just straight up click play. And also we have Lutris installed. And Lutris is a manager for all of these games and you can install games straight from it as well. I don't know why the forest is in there twice, but let's just click play and see what happens. So this game will launch with Steam Play using a platform compatibility tool and that is Proton. So let's try it out. And as you saw there, VR mode did actually come up. Before the game starts, let me say installing this was an absolute breeze. I just copied a few commands, pasted them into the terminal and everything just worked pretty much straight out of the box. Installing Steam, a breeze. Installing Lutris, a breeze. In fact, I later on found out that you don't even need the terminal to install Lutris. You could have just installed it straight from Pop OS's built-in app store called the Pop Shop. And from there, everything was just super simple. You access the Steam settings and change the Steam Play to Proton. And from there on, you should be able to install every app through either Steam or through Lutris. Either way, they should just work straight out of the box. So as we can see here, we are just waiting for the game to begin now. And boom, look at that. Even the screen resolution has been set correctly. Let's jump right in, I guess. I accidentally hit enter there. I was gonna say something about the graphics being set to high automatically, but let's just jump right in and see, see what we get. I did want to try install graphics drivers onto Pop OS from the AMD website, but it turns out that Pop OS actually comes pre-installed with a bunch of different drivers. So having an AMD graphics card, I was pretty much set to go. So now this is going to take a little bit longer, probably for the reason that again, we are running it off of a USB stick, but normally this would actually be a lot faster. So as you can see, the game has actually launched, which is, well, to be expected. It seems to be running extremely smoothly. My 144 hertz monitor is visible, by the way. So that's pretty damn cool. Uh, what I want to do is I want to start up a new game in normal mode, and I want to see how well this runs because this game can be super, super demanding. As I said earlier, I have an AMD RX 5700 XT. So this actually should have come with the drivers pre-installed on Pop! OS, or so I have been reading. That was super fast. And oh my God, is it smooth. I'm gonna skip uh, so that we can jump right into the gameplay, but that so far seems super smooth. And like I was telling you guys in yesterday's video, Linux by default uses less resources for everything. And therefore you should actually be getting more FPS than you would be getting on Windows. So it's preset to medium. I'm just gonna preset it to high right there. I'm gonna turn VSync on because this monitor supports it. And I am just going to click back and continue. Oh my God. This is really, really working incredibly well. 
this is amazing. Now I can totally imagine software having a bunch of different issues with, for example, running uh, games that require a anti-cheat engine thing to turn on at the start. So for example, PUBG might have an issue because it requires to check for those anti-cheats. You know, all that like weird software. I think Fortnite has BattleEye. I can totally see why that might be a problem when trying to run games on Linux, but games that you would standard just run like this from Steam. I mean, this is working unbelievably well, like maybe even better than it runs in Windows, to be honest. And this is a very compelling thing that I could switch to because of how well this runs, except for the fact that I cannot run Adobe Suite on it, which I use for editing all my videos. Then again, maybe I can. That'll all be made very clear in the video about productivity, which will be next after this one. But certainly gaming doesn't seem to be an issue at all. Like, you guys can see how smooth this is. There was a little bit of a hiccup right there. Again, I'm almost 100% certain that is because we're running it off of a USB stick. And USB sticks, of course, have only a certain amount of read and write speeds that they can work with. But I just didn't have an empty hard drive I could install this on. So installing it on a USB stick seems to be the only good idea for me. But currently, damn oh damn, is this working really freaking well. Like, I see pretty much no hiccups right now. I can build, I can cut down logs. Everything just works almost, well, actually not almost, straight out of the box. All I did was I just installed Lutris, installed Seam, set it to Proton. Uh, no drivers needed to be installed because of course it's Linux, it's open source. Most drivers are just installed right there out of the box. Um, and if you have NVIDIA graphics cards, I'm not exactly sure how it works. On the Pop! OS website, it does say that if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you may need to install additional software. So that's a thing. Um, that's a thing that it does say on the Pop! OS website. But again, there's extremely helpful, extremely good people in the comments section that have been telling me what I said wrong in the last video. And I'm sure that they would be willing to help you out. And then of course, on the Discord, we have Hudder who is absolutely incredible. He certainly would be able to help you out, I think. Again, I, I can't speak for him, but you guys know. Plus, he seems to really love what he does. So, um, no, certainly. So far, I mean, this is probably the most graphically demanding game I have. So after this, I'm not even sure if there's a point in testing Subnautica because really Subnautica, I, don't, I think Subnautica doesn't have as good graphics as this. Uh, I think the only problem I have heard of is DirectX 12. And as you saw there, I couldn't switch this game to DirectX 12. So I think Linux doesn't have DirectX 12 support. Uh, so games that require DirectX 12 support might not run on Linux. And like the fact that you could install this on a USB stick, grab the USB stick and take it to school and just run it on a school computer and you know, do so quality gaming on a school computer because you can boot it off a USB stick. I feel like that's just an added benefit of Linux because look how well it works. I think, I think that is amazing, honestly. That is absolutely unbelievable. And as I said, with Steam running Proton now, from what I have seen, I can click on any game in my Steam library and just straight up install it. Like if you look at this, all the games right here just say install as if it was Windows, just like that. It, it, there is no difference between this and Windows now, except for DirectX 12. And if I wanted to, I could really run Subnautica to show you guys, but realistically, I think it would just make the video longer. And as I said, I certainly think that The Forest is one of the more graphically demanding games that I own. And the fact that it ran perfectly smoothly, 144 Hertz and VSync, is absolutely amazing. So yeah, I'm going to have to agree with all the people on the Discord and all the people in the comments section telling me that Linux is now a viable way to game. And it certainly fixes issues with Microsoft security flaws because you're not using a Microsoft operating system. And it makes just overall, it uses much less system resources. Like if I go into the resource, uh, it's not called resource, there, system monitor. If I go into the system monitor, you'll be able to see that it's using much less of everything than Windows does. If you look here, it's using much less memory than Windows does when it's idle, and I'm recording audio and the screen right now, and it's using overall much less CPU 
than Windows would be. So it's overall just a much faster system because of that. Not only that, but again, I am running it off of a USB stick. So if you ran it off a hard drive, you'd be balling. In fact, if you ran it off of a SSD, even better. So this is absolutely amazing. I might have to consider switching to Linux and maybe like running a VM inside Linux with Windows to be able to do Premiere Pro, Photoshop, After Effects, and VR. It's something to think about for yourself. And if you're really good at this kind of stuff, certainly a really cool option. So if you guys liked today's video, I certainly learned a lot. I hope you did as well. Make sure to give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. But please tell me why down in the comment section below. And if I got anything wrong, please also tell me down in the comment section below. I certainly love seeing you guys telling me that I'm wrong in something, but please do it respectfully. If you guys aren't part of the community yet and want to join the community, we have a Discord down in the description below. We also have a Reddit there where I want to see you guys posting your spicy memes. There's a lot of beautiful spicy memes there from yesterday where we tried to make a cake. Spoiler alert, it didn't work out the way I thought it would. But yeah, if you guys want to be notified of future content, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.